Now let's talk about the types of radiation that occur. So a nuclear, we have a radioactive isotope, it's unstable. At some point in time, it's going to do a nuclear fission reaction and break apart. At that point in time, it's going to release some type of radiation. All right? And there are four types of radiation that we uh, will focus on. All right? So the first type of uh, radiation is an alpha particle. All right, and it's basically a helium nucleus. Two protons and two neutrons. Uh, for each type of radiation, we've got a couple of symbols. We've got a Greek letter that we use just, you know, to talk about, to write out instead of writing the alpha particle. We would write alpha. Sometimes, not all the time, when you see an alpha particle, because it is just two protons and two neutrons, it has a plus two charge, so you might see two plus. Okay. So alpha two plus, that's an alpha particle. All right. So sometimes when those radioactive, usually the bigger ones, with big isotopes that have just have way too many protons and um, neutrons, how do they become more stable? By kicking off two protons and two neutrons. They emit an alpha particle. Uh, and then we're going to use atomic symbols. So that's, I'll say it's Greek symbol. Yeah. It's atomic symbol that we're going to use when we balance nuclear equations. Get excited, more balancing of new equations. A lot, like significantly easier than redox reactions though, okay? So I will warn you, I will let you know the good news about that, okay? Uh, so because it's a helium nucleus, we use helium's atomic symbol two and four. So it's two protons, two neutrons, atomic number two, mass number of four. The second type of particle that we'll talk about is a beta particle. Now, there's actually two types of beta particles, maybe more, but uh, when I refer to it as beta particle, I'm talking about this one, and it's essentially an electron. All right, so this is for uh, isotopes that have too many neutrons. If you have too many neutrons, a neutron can turn into a proton. And when it does that, it spits out an electron. And that's the technical term, spits out an electron. Okay. All right, and so my symbols for this are, the Greek letter is a beta. Okay. With a negative. And my atomic symbol is electron. Now, electron is not a proton or a neutron, so how are we going to do this? Um, just to uh, keep, uh, for balancing purposes, what we do is mass number is zero, no protons, no neutrons, but we do give it an atomic number of minus one. And that's just going to be for our purposes when we balance chemical equations. The third type of radiation that can be emitted when an isotope undergoes a nuclear fission reaction is it can emit a positron. And what a positron is, it's the antimatter particle of the electron.
All right, so you might have heard of antimatter, probably most commonly in like sci-fi movies, okay? But antimatter is out there. Um, and what antimatter is, is it's a particle, sort of like a partner particle for a, for a fundamental particle that has, is exactly the same, so the antimatter of the positron is exactly the same as the electron, the same thing as the electron, except for one key difference, okay? And this antimatter core has a, it's an electron with a positive charge, all right? As the mass of electron has a spin, it can have a spin, the same spin of the electron, but it has the positive charge. So it is an electron with positive charge. Now when antimatter particles meet each other, they annihilate each other and they destroy each other and make energy. Okay? So when I think of positron as being the antimatter of the electron, for some reason, like it pops into my head that it's evil. Okay? And so when I usually, not everybody's gonna do this, but when I draw a positron, I gotta make it evil. Okay? So what do I do? I give it a top hat and the mustache. Okay? It's up to no good. You don't know what it's going to do. It's going to tie somebody up and put them in front of a train. Like that kind of evil. All right? So that's my positron. Most people don't do that, though. Most sane people do not do that. Okay? So what's the uh, Greek symbol for a beta particle? It is beta, but positive. So you can differentiate between the uh, beta particle electron and the positron. And for its atomic symbol, it is an electron with a positive charge. We put a zero and a plus one for its atomic number. All right, so in our definition of radiation, that we initially stated. We said that radiation was energy or particles that are emitted when an isotope decays during a nuclear reaction, okay? So these are the particles that can be emitted. They can also emit uh, protons or neutrons, but you know, that's not anything new. We know about those. When they break down, they can uh, kick out protons or neutrons. Uh, but the energy, what are we talking about? Energy, well that is, you know, it's a particle as well. It's a photon though. And it is a gamma ray. Hmm. All right. And what's a gamma ray? It's a high energy photon, very high energy photon. If you remember the electromagnetic spectrum from good old Gen Chem 1 or physics or whenever you last uh, looked at it, you know, you have visible light, then UV getting more energetic, then X-ray even more energetic, and on all the way to the end was cosmic rays, or no, excuse me, gamma rays. Gamma rays. A very high energy. That's what made the Hulk, remember? All right, gamma rays made the Hulk. So you gotta be careful. Run gamma rays. All right, so um, what are we, what's our symbols? Well, the Greek letter symbol is a gamma, which looks like an up down, upside down ribbon. All right, it doesn't have a charge, just a photon, so we just draw the gamma. And in uh, atomic symbols, we keep the gamma, and it's just a photon, not an actual you know, fundamental particle, so it is zero, zero, nothing. Let's quickly go through uh, the, the types of decay um, in, in terms of what particles they emit, and then also start talking about uh, how to balance nuclear equations. All right. So here is uranium-238 radioactive. When it undergoes a nuclear reaction, every time uranium-238 undergoes nuclear reaction, it's going to undergo what we call alpha decay. So it's gonna decay and emit an alpha particle, so we call it alpha decay. So we mentioned the alpha particle is 
two protons and two neutrons, two protons, two neutrons, and so that's what it does. All right, when it, when that happens, okay, we've got a new element because what defines an element? It's the number of protons, right? Well, this element just lost two protons, so it's not uranium anymore. It has 90 protons, it's thorium. All right, so now we got thorium. And we kind of steal like uh, names from genetics and biology. We call the radioactive isotope that breaks down the parent nuclide or isotope. And the new element that's created, the daughter isotope or the daughter nuclide. The daughter is the middle element? The th thorium, the new element that's created. Yeah, so this would be thorium. That'd be this is like when it's happening. This is like an action photo. It's like uranium, thor, uranium, uranium. It's combining uranium, thorium, uranium, uranium. About to just emitting a uh, uh, alpha particle, and then it's on its way. Then you got thorium. All right. So how you uh, balance? Uh, nuclear equations, again, I said it's a lot easier than redox reactions. All you have to do is make sure that the mass numbers and the atomic numbers equal on both sides. Okay. So the mass numbers, mm, balancing nuclear equations. All it is is that the mass numbers on the reactant side have to equal the mass numbers on the product side. And the atomic numbers on the reactant side have to equal the mass atomic number. on the product side. All right, so let's see if this is balanced. So does 238 equal 234 plus 4? Yes, so that is balanced. Does 92 equal 90 plus 2? Yep, yeah, hey, that's balanced. So that's alpha decay. What happens uh, during beta decay? Well, this is when, when uh, a, this occurs usually when a isotope has too many neutrons. Okay, too many neutrons, not enough protons. So like carbon-14, which we talked about yesterday, was used for radiocarbon dating. Carbon-14 has six protons and eight neutrons. And for such a small element, that's you know, a little bit too many neutrons. So the neutrons, this is where the fourth intermolecular, or intermolecular, Fourth, uh, force, fourth force of nature uh, comes into play. During beta decay, the weak force causes or mediates the neutron becoming a proton. And when that happens, it emits that beta particle. Emits an electron. And so let's write the balanced nuclear equation for this process. So carbon-14 is kicking off an electron when it uh, undergoes beta decay. And so what we've got is 14 carbon, 6, carbon 14, goes to nitrogen 14, 7, plus electron, a beta particle. So does 14 equal 14 plus 0? Yeah. Does 6 equal 7 plus a negative 1? Yes, it does. What's going on with positron emission? This is when you've got too many protons. Right? Carbon-10 has six protons and only four neutrons. So it's got a lot of protons pushing apart. Too much electromagnetic force repulsion. So what happens, again, mediated by the weak force, uh, it emits a proton, the proton becomes a neutron, and it emits a positron. 
So let's write out that balanced chemical equation, or balanced nuclear equation, not chemical. Carbon 10 becomes boron 10. plus that positron, which again is evil. Is that balanced? Yes, 10 equals 10 plus zero, and six equals five plus one. So uh, we'll do some more examples, but usually what we're gonna do is uh, either predict what particle is being emitted, so if you know carbon-10 becomes boron-10, the atomic number went down by one, it has to be a positron, a plus one. Or if you could uh, alternatively say, okay, carbon-10 undergoes positron emission, what's the daughter isotope being produced? And you can figure it out just by the, the difference. So here's a uh, table that summarizes those that we just talked about, alpha, beta, and positron emission, and then two other ones. Uh, that I didn't go in through in, uh, in detail, but that would be when a, uh, a isotope emits a gamma photon, gamma ray, gamma emission, uh, gamma, or gamma, yeah, gamma, what do I want to say? Yeah, I don't know what I want to call that. Emits a photon, emits a gamma decay, I don't know. Okay, emits a gamma ray photon, okay, emits a photon. All right, uh, high energy photon. And here, if you look at this, I know you're probably not gonna be able to see this, uh, but it's thorium-90, or excuse me, thorium-234, emits that gamma ray and becomes thorium-234. This gamma ray, that's in a photon, not any particles are changing. And so it's the exact same isotope. So that doesn't change. That's why we have zeros and zeros to know it doesn't change any. Now what happens, why that happens is, well, that's just a photon being emitted. How do, how did we emit photons? Uh, how do atoms emit photons? Not nuclear reactions, but how do atoms emit photons? Yeah, so when an electron goes from a higher potential energy or higher energy level to lower energy level. Remember that in Gen Chem 1? So we go from n equals 5 to n equals 4, it emits a photon. The wavelength matches that uh, energy transition. Same thing's happening uh, in the nucleus. The protons and neutrons exist in energy levels. And so you have radioactive isotopes that are just in higher energy levels, and that's why they're unstable. And then they'll come back down to a lower potential energy, uh, more stable state, and they'll emit a photon. But the energy levels transitions for nuclei are a lot bigger than the energy levels for uh, electrons. So they emit very high energy photons, gamma rays. Um, and so these, uh, this happens. This is also useful uh, if you, uh, um, or if you, if you know anyone, or if you, I mean, hopefully not, but uh, people undergo radiation uh, for cancer therapy, they're being emitted with gamma rays. And one of those is technetium. Technetium is a, a radioactive isotope 43 that's useful, use, one of the ones that's used to emit gamma rays. And they can, it's high energy, and they can focus those gamma rays to very small. Um, focus points, and so they can kill individual cells if they really wanted to. All right, and then the other one is called electron capture, and we'll do an example later, but this one's different in that the particle isn't being emitted, it's actually on the reactant side. So this is another example or another way that a proton can become a neutron, so there's too many protons in that nucleus, and what happens in Electron capture is that really, this usually happens for really big isotopes, those really big isotopes, that when that proton uh, becomes a neutron, it j basically eats one of its core electrons. All right, it just eats it, okay? Nobody else is gonna say it eats it, but that's what it's doing. It's eating one of its own electrons. It's crazy, all right? And so when that happens, the electron and that zero minus one is on the reactant side, but the way we're going to balance the, electron, balance the nuclear equation is the exact same. 